What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music content creation and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Jesse Kazam. Uh, and I am Veritas, and today we are uh, very fortunate to have uh, Mara here. Yes. Um, I actually don't know your official title. I've heard co-founder, lead dev, creative director. Are you all of the above, or is there some better <laughs> title for, for you? I don't know. Like I think I love the creative director. I am CEO because I have to be. Uh, I'm, <laughs> you know, I was lead programmer a lot of, like the years. Now I am programming also, just because we have like the few people on the beginning. And uh, yeah, in the past I was doing everything, you know, when we grow up. So very, very growing up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, you, you've been working on um, Gray Zone Warfare, a game that basically everybody <laughs> is is excited about. Um, we, we're all super stoked. Um, so yeah, Jesse, I don't know. Do you uh, yeah. you have anything you wanted to start so, with? Or? Thank you so much for for taking the time with us. Uh, yeah, we're you know some, me and Veritas kind of, of Gray Zone popped on our radar a while back when we saw the first few trailers and have just been kind of following it super closely uh, ever since. You know, coming from. You know, what I've noticed is a lot of people from, a. I think Gray Zone is getting a lot of different types of people excited. I've seen people from, you know, like the more survival game community be excited. I've seen people from like extraction shooter games, you know, me and Veritas, you know, played a lot of Tarkov excited. I think, you know, what you Milsim. guys, yeah, Milsim people, I think you guys have kind of blended a lot. So kind of my first question is kind of where did the inspiration for Gray Zone come from? And, and are you guys kind of intentionally blending a lot of these aspects from a lot of these other games into kind of one experience okay um there is like the two answers for it you know yeah. one is uh, one is the honest and one is the politically correct <laughs> you know a little bit so the honestly when we are uh, starting to thinking about the new game and we were looking with the at the times with the new verse about the market. We did probably the first market research ever in our history, and uh, we were trying to position us on the mobile space and uh, where we can uh, win the fight against the big brands, you know. Mm. And there was like the five to five PVE, PVP, you know, this kind of the genre. And uh, we were more like the, you know, we were afraid of the five to five because, uh, you know, there was rumors that the big games are coming. There was a lot of rumors that Destiny is coming, for example, or oh. Apex Legends, you know, Battlefield, all these like the big brands, which like the, they have a really big advantage compared to you. And uh, they have a lot of better attention because people are more survive everything because it's just a big brand, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and uh, because we failed with the Shadow Gun War games, which was five to five, we were not confident to do like the pure multiplayer game because it's not so easy. It's not just about the shooting and network code. It's about the balancing, how you are using the things. And we still didn't crack why, it's, uh, why it didn't work, you know, mm. why, for example, Valorant is working. And uh, we found out later, but, uh, you know, at the time we just uh, were not balls, you know, to try it again. <laughs> And uh, there was like the battle royale stuff, which was already uh, on the peak. So it was uh, visible that it will fall down like the, the you know, it mm. just became the, like the old. And uh, we were moving more to the PvE, PvP stuff, you know, something yeah. like the what we did with the Shadowgun Legends. But we wanted to do it a little bit differently. We want to do it more hardcore-ish because we saw like the space. And we were still thinking about the mobile. But when we make the first concept, which is a little bit, you know, it's it's like the fifty percent different what it was on the, what is now. Then we realized that, uh, you know, at, before that we also, you know, I push everybody in the company, mostly the designers, to read every book about the design, and uh, read the uh, and play the games. You know, we select like the bambillions of the games and just play them. You know, for the few months. Yeah. And of course, one of the game was Tarkov or this kind of the hardcore games. And we were thinking like the more about like the, you know, doing the hardcore stuff, like the tactical stuff and mix it with the PVE thing. 
and we also know that uh, a lot of people were uh, complaining about the multiplayer in or PvP in the Tarkov. <laughs> so, and a lot of people were uh, like the saying, "Hey, I want to play the single player. You know, I want to like to do only mm. PvE." And um, so we were thinking, "Hey, there is like the you know some market." And uh, the other market research was that. Um, okay, so then we moved to the you know because we starting to. Uh, moving to the Tarkov stuff. And uh, then the UI is very complicated. You know, it's very hard to do it on yeah. the mobile. And uh, so then we said like, okay, the concept is sounds great, you know, but uh, it's not possible to, read, to do it on the mobile screen. So let's move, you know, let's like the, the market is already screw on the mobile. You know, there is a lot of user acquisition KPIs. It's not like the, about the games anymore. It's mostly about the monetization and retention. Mm. So we said like, okay, go away and then the start you know i wanted to say something different but you know. you, feel free by all means yeah. uh you can you can you can say whatever yeah you know i i don't know if there is like the, some kind of the young guys you know and uh, <laughs> we, we're, we're definitely not g-rated no uh, okay 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 so so uh we move like the to the to the pc and then the things start to like the be more and more, um, how to say, uh, like the starting to be more uh, like the complicated or we're trying to start to make the more sophisticated game. It's mm -hmm. like the, you know, when we look at the market on the PC and we found all this stuff uh, which happening on the, on the market with the AAA studios, like the killing their brands, you know, the yeah. Call of Duty, the cats, you know, the the Battlefield, like the, their new version completely like the different. Everybody wants Battlefield free and they are creating something completely different. Um, there was uh, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, you know, they also changed it, you know, this was about the big guys like the badasses, you know, now you have this kind of the I cannot say like the weird characters, but like the different characters yeah, for yeah. this genre, you know. So a lot of people are abandoning this space, and uh, they are basically became the upset, you know. Yeah. So we said like, okay, so the big companies abandoning this space, you know, these hardcore guys who wants like the more mature games play as the big asses, you know, and then like the then uh, uh, let's go for it, you know. Yeah. So we make like the how many. Uh, copies was sold by the, for example, different games, and uh, we said, okay, that's good space for us. We also found that um, mostly the indie studios are trying to make the tactical games. You know, that like the 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 AAA guys doesn't have the balls again. You know, it's like the we know like the, they are trying to make the DMZ and these kind of things, but we were 100 percent sure that. They didn't understand why people playing Tarkov, you know, or if they mm. understand it, they will never be able to put it exactly same like the in the Call of Duty because they care about yeah. billions of the players, you know. Then the, you know they are not, they cannot behave like Nikita, for example. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we know that there is like the really uh, small competition from the or little competition from the big guys, yeah. And uh, we were uh, thinking a little bit. I don't know how to say it, like arrogantly that we can be better than most indie guys, you know, like the, these kind of the free guys making the tactical games and whatever. So we move like the, there and uh, we also switch to the Unreal. You know, on the beginning, there was not big map, like the 42 square kilometers. We were okay. afraid of it. Interesting. You know? there, was, there was several small maps, you know, which you basically travel around, you know. So uh, because we didn't, we were afraid that we will not be able to run 42 square kilometers in the jungle, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but it's like the slowly change, you know, it's like the yeah. people were scared, you know, then we get like the really good guys who create, who were working on the Terran editor for decades, you know, and uh, they, uh, you know, they were working on some game in the Hangar 13, they killed their game. And they, of course, became a little bit upset and it just said, you know, at the time, you know, so so I asked him, hey, maybe we can do something together like the VR really wants to push. And uh, yeah, they just make this stuff for us. So that's yeah. that's I mean, <laughs> that's awesome to hear. It's cool to see because I from a basically from like a gamer's perspective have thought a lot of those same things where like the kind of vacuum hole in the market has went 
where like I've played some survival games. I've played some Milsim games. I've obviously played a lot of Tarkov and you don't see a whole lot of people doing it or at least under. It's so funny to hear you say that Call of Duty didn't understand why people play Tarkov and that's why DMZ failed because I've said that so many times where I'm like DMZ was fun, but you could tell that they don't understand why people want this type of game. So to hear you say that, it's just so funny because I've come to so many of those realizations from the gamer perspective of like wanting something else in this genre from people who kind of understand why we play these games. Um, and then and I think most gamers would agree with the sentiment of these big AAA brands wanting to make billion dollar games and they're stuck in franchises that they've been in, you know, Battlefield, Call of Duty, They've been in these franchises for so long and they don't know what they want to do with them. They want to sell a lot of copies, but then they want to try something new, but it all has to kind of be in the brand. And so I think you guys were afforded that flexibility of coming with something new and fresh and nobody has expectations of what it's supposed to be. That's what gets me excited for sure. Mm. I, I think I understand like these big guys, you know, it's not so easy like to make some kind of the very hardcore games when the development costs like the hundreds of the millions, you know, you yeah. are risking a lot. And uh, what I don't understand is like the why they are killing their brands, you know, why they are not like the making the new game, you know, why they are not creating the new game, why they are using the Ghost Recon stuff for the like the something which is not related to the Ghost Recon, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. but maybe the people think that it's like good to use this brand, <laughs> and it's actually opposite, you know. So. Yeah. I assume that the big AAA dev companies are probably like every big software company that I ever worked for, which was a bunch of people way high up at the top. Yeah. so disconnected from everything mm. they're the ones signing the checks and you know they just don't i don't know uh, it's like the i think in the game dev the most at least what i i hate like the when the people are like the complaining about the management because most management are ex devs right they rise up you know mm, not so many you get promoted out, out of being a developer know, into but, being a manager so they make like the good games, they move up, and now they are like the bitching yeah. about them, like the, the, they are like the no gamers, but they are actually, I think, the gamers. But I think the, it's about the responsibility and like the mm -hmm. big accountability that you just cannot afford it, you know? Yeah. So you, you, you talked, um, you've talked a bunch about PVE being a, a focus and how, how important PVE is going to be for the game. Um, it seems to me to be. A, a really big challenge how you can make this genre work with pvp right because on one hand you want the pve interactions to be skill-based um on the other hand you don't want it to be so easy that there's no threat there's no you know anything like that so it seems to me like you need to find a balance between how how often you fight and win against ai versus how often you just get one tapped and you know what i mean so is that how, like how do you look at at designing ai yeah. and fighting ai philosophically um <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> i think it's like the dark souls you know it's like the you know what it's like the when you are really skilled and you have like the even the good items and good skills in the dark souls you can do pretty nice dancing around them, but you make the one mistake and you are dead, you know, yeah. you just lost everything. I think this is will happen in our game, you know, it's like the, because you can one tap the guys, you know, so if you are careful and uh, you see them first, you, it can be, it can sound really easy, but if you will make the mistake, you will be just one tapped, you know, and or died, you know, or you will, um, uh along the other guys you know or maybe yeah. you go attract the pvp guy you know there is like the it's not uh, in our uh uh hands to somehow balance it you know because this is one tap you know and a lot of things is we don't have the dice rolls that like the hey one tap him or not yeah you know? or like uh, he's playing five hearts so let's one tap him you know <laughs> so it's like the, <laughs> <laughs> or he died five times so don't want that you know? yeah. <laughs> so uh that would be, that like would the, be a, the, a great feature <laughs> <laughs> it's like the in the reality you know it's like the shit happens you know sometimes For sure. it's like the we, we saw it like the the the, the marek mundlo you know the the designer who played the games he saw like the sharp eyes that he see the enemy where i don't see anything 
you know, mm. and he just went up them. I think he's cheating, you know, it's like the, <laughs> he's so crazy. And um, this was like the way the uh, trailer became the boring, you know, because he was just one tapping them like the from the 50 meters, you know, I yeah. feel like the man don't shoot immediately, like the wait a little bit. But uh, he's also a little bit afraid to die. So he just one up them on the big, big, uh, big distance. So I really don't know, you know, I, 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 you know, I should not say it like the, uh, that I don't know what happened. I think like the, I know what will happen. Yeah. But I'm not sure, you know, it's like the, we have, we are, we don't have the, we are trying, we, we make different system for the aiming for the AI, you know, then like the, in the normal games, in the normal games, you aiming on the exact point. Mm -hmm. And this means that like the, it's, it's, it's very hard to make the, uh, bad aiming because the dot is like the, it's, it's just the point, right? And it's the point is same like the if you are five meters or 100 meters it's yeah different. so we make something different we make like the that they are trying to aim at you and they are selecting based on the base on the skills based on the some other stuff some uh, uh, point around you and then the point is coming like due to you and when they are shooting it's moving up you know when they are like the moving it's moving up you know whatever but they are also shooting from the gun, you know? They don't have the direction like in the other games. In the past, we have always firing direction, which we try to rotate. Now it's handled by the animation. So I'm waiting until they aim at you, at least to some distance. And then I press the trigger, you know? And then gotcha. something happens, you know? So sometimes they are shooting around you. Sometimes they hit you. It's really like the randomize, you know? And um, that's cool. It's it's. It's like in the life, you know, it's like they yeah. sometimes cannot hit you. They even have like the, when they are injured, they have like the, some kind of the stuff that they are not able to aim like the, to you. Um, and uh, you just need to balance it. Yeah. You know? So I think like you, you mentioned Dark Souls and I think the, the, one of the most significant aspects of games like Dark Souls or other games that I think are like truly skill based. Another example is, um, I, I don't know if you ever saw or played Mordhau, um, but uh, that that game is a game where if someone is 20% better than you, you can't win. <laughs> you can't accidentally win. In a shooter, you could get lucky with a headshot, right? Yeah. Um, so the AI in Dark Souls, right? There's like patterns, there's rules, there's timings. People have the ability to learn how they telegraph their attacks. So you can get better at knowing how to respond. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that even a thing? I, like, I don't even know how you could put anything like that into a shooter. Is that something that you think about? Or, you know, like, for example, they would yell before, you know, before they yeah. shoot or something like that, right? Yeah, they start to bitch, you know, when they see you. So they like the like the start to like the saying something and you have probably one second. I think, uh, you know, we have this kind of the emotion system. So when they see you, the the emotions for the for the aggressiveness is going up, based on like the if you are looking at him, mm -hmm. if you already shoot or whatever, it's still not like the taking the distance because they are reacting same if they see you from the five meters or one hundred meters. So I want to implement some kind of the surprise. So when you meet together like the immediately, they will immediately shoot. You know the oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so uh, this is what this is why they now like they can kill anybody faster if they are quick enough because when they see you they have around the one second until they start to shoot. So we need to fix it. And uh, but like the, when the fight is starting, it's like the, there is not uh, like the how they call it in the Dark Souls the these first frames. Uh, oh, the eye frames. Yeah. Yeah. So where you where they're basically like are you talking about like when you roll you're invincible for a window or no 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 like the oh it's like the it's special word for it I just forget about it it's like the when they are starting to attack so we have some time to basically react you know yeah like oh, that, they like, like the telegraph yeah like, like you see that they're about to the do this animation. swing versus this swing like the yeah the that basically the animation hint telling you what's about to happen or yeah yes exactly you know. But uh, this is, you know, of course, if you will see that he's taking the grenade, you have like the, some time like yeah. to do it. But with the trigger, there is not possible to do it, you know. So for sure.
Before we move on, I do want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor for this episode, and that is BetterHelp. Uh, we've worked with BetterHelp for a while now. Uh, BetterHelp is an online platform where you can get access to counseling or therapy. Um, no matter what you need that for, if there's a legitimate like crises or something going on in your life or all the way on the other spectrum, if you just feel like you're not getting what you want out of life right now or extracting as much value or as um, proficient or as you want to be, no matter where you are on that spectrum, having somebody that's available to talk to uh, that is sole intention is to help you and guide you can be an incredibly invaluable thing. Bro, a couple of days ago, was dri <laughs> actually, no, it was yesterday, was driving to a family thing uh, mm. and just being in the car with my wife blasting some old school tunes and yeah, singing yeah and just laughing and having fun was like it was something that i i actually hadn't i felt like i hadn't experienced in like a year mm. because i was i for a long time i was just down in the dumps dealing with my own mental health issues yeah. and honestly i i could not i could not have gotten to where i am now yeah um if it wasn't for better help getting therapy uh genuinely changed my life and uh yeah it's it's crazy to to think that smiling and laughing and in, in a real core <laughs> yeah, genuine yeah like wow today i'm carefree the sun's out things feel good yep after being in a dark place is crazy um and, and that's there's nothing more important than in life for than sure. your mental health for sure 100 percent. and so um yeah it, it it it's just invaluable to have somebody who's there to just listen and like the, like the, the wall, we've talked about this so many times, like the walls come down when you just know that it's not like somebody you feel like you have to justify a thought or justify a feeling to, you know what I mean? That is what they're there for, to like be that unfiltered thing. And so many times just by speaking things, speaking the things you feel, you already can kind of see it. And then having somebody to talk to and work through it, alternative opinions, like that stuff is truly invaluable. And BetterHelp makes it easy. It being an online platform is like, this is one of those things I always say feels like it was perfect for that. It doesn't like we're trying to force it that way. It feels like it makes the whole experience better. Scheduling appointments, rescheduling appointments. You can get a therapist. And then if you just don't feel like you're connecting with that person and you're spending your money and you really want to feel that connection, it's super easy. You don't have to call and leave a message. It's super easy to just select a different one, find that person. You can communicate, write notes, you know, take notes on what, you know, something came up and you want to talk to them about it. You don't want to forget. It just feels like it was made for that. So you can find your social sweet spot with better help. Visit betterhelp.com slash podcast today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash podcast. Thank you so much to better help for sponsoring this episode. And I think that like from a 10,000 foot view, like more philosophically, you know, what Dark Souls does really well, because obviously it's good as inspiration, but it's not a shooter, kind of like you were saying, so it's very different. But I think that concept of what's great about games like Dark Souls is that like if you die, there's almost always something to learn from that encounter. Always. Where you're and, like, and it was probably your fault. Yeah, I didn't know definitely. he was going to do that or you're like learning your enemy or you know what I mean? I made a mistake. Like you said, I make one mistake and that mistake. And so I think that as kind of like the ethos is a really good place to be because I think that's what in games, in some of the hardcore games I've played, you know, obviously I've played a lot of Tarkov, but even in, you know, Marauders or a cycle or some of these other games that I've tried to do this dying, but especially in Tarkov, when you die and you feel like you knew what you did and you messed up, that's a better feeling to be like, I, I need to try that again. It's better than, you know, an if, if an AI just spawned right in front of you and killed you. And you're like, there's just like, that feels bad because, you know, you lost your gear, you lost whatever, but there wasn't even any knowledge to gain. It was like, that was so far out of my control. So I think obviously, you know, Dark Souls and, and, and Grey Zone are going to be so different because they're shooters and there'll be a challenges when you're talking about like bullets and triggers and they fly real fast. But I think that concept of like, creating experiences where you are they're hardcore and they're brutal and if you mess up you will pay the price but you know there's an element of like learning your enemy learning the factions i know you've talked i know from the gameplay we've only kind of seen the one faction but you guys have talked a little bit about like the enemies will scale up some of them will have better equipment they might be harder to fight you might need to learn how they react to situations and kind of stuff like that 
That's true. Like the from the designer point of view, you just don't want to that the players are like the blaming the game, you know, or designer for it. Yeah, they should blame themselves, you know, so they are learning. I think the games are also uh, like the, a lot about the learning. You know, you understand the rules, you learn yeah. it, then you enjoy it. You know that you get the new challenges, you learn it. You know, and you just continue with it. So this is like the this is how it should be. You know, and. Um, you know, our game is it's it's same like the, from the Call of Duty when you are playing the this kind of the PvP is very hard to like to learn something, you know. Yeah. Because you always dive from somebody, you know. And uh, but our game is also like the very slow, you know. It's like the very tactical. So I think it's like the if you make the mistake, you make the mistakes. You didn't see him like the first time, you know. Yeah. You didn't expect him, you know, or you just jump over the wall and he was there, you know. He yeah. killed you. You should do it, it's, you know. So. Yeah, there is definitely not like the you know I was talking about the Dark Souls mostly about the player experience like the you know yeah. you think that he's like the really good you know he's enjoying and then the Dark Souls slap you <laughs> and you die you know so it's same like the in the Tarkov I hate like the when I die or died you know I'm not playing the Tarkov anymore but uh, when I died because the greed you know oh this yes. was the most painful like the stuff you yes. know because like. The, I was always saying like, hey, don't go there, don't go there, and then should have just, agreed. I should have left, I should have left. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, so, for sure. Well, so that's it's kind of interesting. So one of the, one of the things that in in my short time playing, um, Gray Zone, the most significant thing to me was the the experience of dying. Um, it's completely different for one major reason right in tarkov mm -hmm. especially if you're playing with a group in tarkov you die and that's like the equivalent of you you have been disqualified from the game go sit in timeout yeah, yeah. and watch your friends have fun while yeah. you do nothing right so it's it's like a deflation when you die yeah in gray zone because it's a server instance you know similar to like the daisy kind of thing you're back at the fob and you die and it's almost an elevation like it, now you have like the adrenaline of like Sh i gotta get back there i gotta get back there you yeah. know what i mean so how much of that there i've seen people who have said oh <laughs> they need to they need to remove that from the game now i personally <laughs> disagree but i would love to know what your philosophy is on on being able to basically get back to where you died yeah. in whatever way and, and interact with that I think it's like the massive multiplayer online. It's like the, the past one, you know, when you die and you reboot on the on the grave graveyard and going back to the like the your body, you know. So, so I think it's better. We we also make some changes in the coma because in the past, like the or past, like the it's two weeks. I think <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like the, you know a lot of stuff is changing a lot uh, when the lungs and the livers were destroyed. You die. We change it that you enter the coma, you know. So there is like oh. a bigger chance to be in the coma, and the other guys can take you like the up, you know. So it will be more like the more cooperative, or like the you will don't die like the extremely like the, a lot, you know. Because this is what we wanted to, not like in the Tarkov, you know, just go away, you know, you just die. Yeah. But we want to have this kind of the medic stuff. I really love the videos in the past in the streaming. When in the squads, you know, when the people were dying and they grab them, you know, and and like to move them like yeah. the, behind the corner and work on them, you know, it was like the like the, in the real life, you know. So, so this is what we want to have this kind of the experience. You deciding like the if you continue in the fight, if you first like the eliminate threat, you know, or you just like the take care about your friend, you know, and you are risking that mm -hmm. you will die. So, this is what we want. And I, I also don't agree that we should like to throw people up, you know, it's just because people think about the extractions too much. This is not extraction, you know, this is not Tarkov. This is more like the multiplayer online yeah. game or massive multiplayer game where we are just living and playing the session and you are just there, you know, it's it's different concept. Yeah, I agree. And I, I, I am excited for that. You know, I haven't, I haven't played it yet, but that, you know, when Veritas was talking about that, that complete, you know, switch up of dying isn't the end of your experience you know it's not just immediately over but the ability to react to it because i i think i understand some of the criticism of people who who don't want 
basically a, a battle that never ends where like if there's 4v4 in a PvP fight and they kill me and while the fight's still going on, I come back and I kill a guy and he comes back and it's like, and it's forever. And I understand that, but I think that there's a lot of interesting experiences and because of how big the map is, you know, getting back to any particular fight, depending on where it is, might actually take a while. And it kind of opens up the ability to almost like react to the the world and the map a little bit. Maybe you try and cut them off on their way back to the fob with all the loot or something like that. Maybe you don't just keep, you know, running your head through the wall, going back to that one fight. Maybe you switch it up and go to a different area, or maybe you messed up and you alerted too many AI and the whole battle is just lost and you abandon it. Like, yeah. I just like the, the thought of having those options of being able to continue your play session however you want. Maybe you don't want to go back because you didn't really have any loot on you and it doesn't matter, but just th th the feeling that it's not always just a deflated balloon where every time you die, you're just like, okay, I'm done. I have to go completely restart. Um, mm -hmm. I think is going to provide some cool experience. Or at least I hope I'm excited for that to create some unique experiences. I, I think, hadn't even. Oh no, go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. You know, I read like the the some kind of the comment that people will like the re respawn and move back and the fight will be never ending. I don't think it's like the true, uh, because you respawn even if you are like the running naked. You have to call the heli and you probably don't fight in the first city. You know, you fight somewhere yeah. else. So it will take several minutes, you know, to heli arrive and uh, and the fly with the heli, and then you have to run somewhere, and the fight is like the probably somewhere where you have to go around the AI, you know. Yeah. So it's not like the easy to just like the respawn, like in the battlefield, for example, you know. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah, you're you're basically fighting, you know. You have to get re-geared up, right, and fight your way back potentially to, uh, to your, you know, your your friends. It's it's just a completely different experience you, because you're playing the game the whole time, right? Mm -hmm. Which is like the the epitome of of the opposite of all the things that I that frustrate me about Tarkov is I feel like so many of the aspects of the design, intentional and unintentional, don't respect your time. You spend <laughs> yeah. so much time in menus and not actually playing the game, whereas this is like almost the entirety of it you're spent playing the game. And what you just described too about the whole down state, every in this game in Tarkov, anytime I always hear about like the down state, I always kind of roll my eyes until just five minutes ago, where I realized like that's a it's another experience where you're still actively there, especially yeah. now you could do the whole like Daisy thing where it's like black screen, you're unconscious. <laughs> Now that that could work, although I kind of would love if like you open your eyes and it's blurry and you hear muffled noises and then it closes. You know, like you're still experiencing kind of like partially what's going on. Um, but then also, you know, that gives the people you're playing with the opportunity to say like, do we go? The, the risk reward there is like it's going to take him six minutes to get geared up and get back here. Do we want to risk dying to save six minutes? Maybe potentially, yeah. right? You might be like, please save me. I've got something, please. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> such an interesting yeah, for push sure. and pull. Yep. It's like the, you know, the, that was one thing. It's like the big player accountability. It's like the uh no accountability agency. Yeah. Sorry. It's like the they can decide it like the what they want. There is no like the rules or like the very limited rules. And uh it should create uh a lot of uh, possibilities, you know, a lot of decision makings, you know, a lot of uh, experience different, you know, so it's like the, you can decide it like, the hey, I'm going to rest talk or like the, they already win the fight. So I'm going back to the like the body and take everything or everybody die because the, they are waiting for the, for you or whatever, you know, so yeah. Or they can like the, throw the stuff away, you know, we were thinking about the, um, like the, the insurance, but then we drop it. Uh, so, you know, they can even take the stuff from your body and return back and you will just wait them in the in the base. You yeah. Know? So, it's, you know. so now all, all that being said, I'd love to hear the the core. So games like this, these kind of like hardcore tactical shooter games, it all hinges on death actually feeling meaningful, right? Because if we have... Mm -hmm unlimited stuff back in our stash and un, you know just it then it it doesn't matter because it's like okay whatever i'll just go back or whatever 
So I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, I, I, I don't want to ask questions that you can't answer, but on like death, what it's supposed to feel like and by and kind of connected to that, what like loot and looting is supposed to feel like, because obviously there's two ends of the spectrum. If I have absolutely nothing and every time I find one gun, I die. The game is so hard and I never have anything that I don't want to play. And on the other end of the spectrum, if I have a stash full of 500 guns and armors and unlimited ammo, then when I die, it doesn't feel hard. It doesn't matter. So and there's no reason to go and back. There's no reason to go back. So like, where? Do, what's your kind of vision for like where Gray Zone falls on that spectrum of, you know, I need to be able to, I need to want to go out into this world so that I can actually find loot and get stuff. So loot can't be too easy to acquire, but it can't be too difficult. Like. How does how do you feel? What do you want that to be looting and and the the price of of dying with something maybe that's really good that you've just got? I think the uh, you know we are trying to balance the game somehow, but I am one hundred percent sure that it will be unbalanced. You know, in this way, in the first early access, we just don't have the data. We need to yeah. wait for the players to play yeah. and see what they can achieve. Uh, the second thing is that uh, we don't have the weapon boxes, you know, we don't have like the another like the containers, so like the in the stash, so the stash is still limited. We have only the the wallet, we have the K ring and med kit, you know, so you can yeah. put the med stuff and and it's like the smaller, so it's like the limited. You can all have bambillions of the of the of the guns in the stash. The thing is that it's also about the time, you know, if you die. You have to call the heli, you know, you have to run by the heli or fly by the heli, you know, you have yeah. to go to like to finish the quest. So it's not only about um, uh, losing the stuff, but it's also losing the time, you know, which you already yeah. invest. So it's like the, another thing. This is what you don't have in the Tarkov, right? It's like the you just pick up and, and press the button and you are back in the game. Yeah. So maybe it will take a little bit longer <laughs> to mm -hmm. get like the back exactly, you know, to finish the quest. <laughs> uh and of course it's about the ego you know so if somebody wants to like the play the game like the running with the hatchet you know and and do some stuff and just <laughs> dying and dying he's like the okay whatever it's like the, your choice you know it's like the whatever if somebody wants to play it as we are expecting that's great you know we will be happy but uh there is no you know i am not like the i'm different a lot, I think I'm different person than Nikita. You know, I am not punishing the people. I am not like the, <laughs> if people are like the good, I am not immediately rising the secure container to the next 20 levels, you know? So it's like the, it's it's not like that, you know? We're creating the experience. We are not creating the frustration. And um, I think the people should still enjoy the games, even it's like the hardcore. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I think that everybody has like the big issues sometimes in the life. So why I should have them in the game, you know, why I should like to work hard, you know, it's like the, when we were uh, working on the, the trigger, we found like some specific behavior that the people start to work in our games, you know, so they are not playing the gameplays, which were fun, you know, based on the fun, but based on the how much money they get, you know, yeah. so they were a grinding stupid missions just because like the per minute it was like the more like the money yeah. you know and this is why we wanted to change it to the in the shadow gun legends that we introduced the fame you know so it's like the, it was about something different you know it was mm. about the money and whatever and uh this should be same in the in the in our game it's about like the experience it's about like yeah. the how you are what you are finding in the in the world uh, that every run is different because like the, there is a lot of aspects, you know, so it should be fun. And yeah. Um, yeah. And if somebody wants to troll or do bad stuff, okay, whatever, you know. Yeah, I, I, I like that perspective, you know what I mean? Because on one hand, you do kind of want to let the, the emergent gameplay, you want to create the world and let the players create the experiences. And sometimes... Sometimes that means somebody's trolling, but that can create a good experience when you finally kill them or whatever. Sometimes, you know, you're always going to have people that min max everything and grind the money. But I like that perspective on, you know, people are always going to want to do that and min max gear. But can there be other systems in the game that promote something else like the fame, like, you know, promote um, engaging with the game outside of just 
grinding money and that actually does add a benefit to the player and people will want to do that too mm -hmm. um so yeah it's like the, you know our game is you don't need to do anything you can do like the just killing you will receive the loot you will still like to get some experience you will like the progress but slowly if you do stuff which we want or we build the systems like the quest for example then you will receive like the you will progress faster you know you will have yeah. the more fun so it's not I was so upset, like the you know, first vibe. I was looking why I don't have the quest on these US guys, you know. Uh, what's the oh, name peacekeeper. of the peacekeeper? <laughs> yeah, it's like the I said, like, the, hey, this is only the guy which is not giving me quests, you know. And I was so upset, so I was digging, like, the why not? And and it was like the 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 I had to kill some PvP guys, like the player guys. Oh, know? yeah. I was so upset, you know, because I didn't want to do PvP and they just killed me like the some kind of the game just because I didn't kill like the players, you know. Mm. And this is what I don't like, you know. It's like the it's a, just you know, or like the, this decision, like the, you do good stuff and you receive something and you select the bad stuff and you receive the unique <laughs> helm, you know? Yeah. It's like the hey, okay. It's like the, you will always select the like the the bad thing, you know, because you want this yeah. helmet because you will never receive it. This is not like the how they like the push you, you know. So one of the uh, one of the challenging points with quests, I think, with Tarkov has historically been um, the wanting to give players enough information to be able to like solve a problem or figure out like locate something. Yeah. Where you want to give them hints, right? Well, at the same time. <laughs> knowing that at some point there's going to be a maybe there already is there probably already is right a gray zone wiki that tells you how to do everything mm -hmm. and the problem with tarkov is people don't even bother to even try to figure it out in the game they go to the wiki yeah. and the yep. wiki tells them that's but that's bad. largely because the game doesn't so i i wonder is that something that you think about um in terms of like giving people quests and wanting to give them enough information <coughs> so that they can achieve the things <coughs> without giving them you know like what about that balance there mm -hmm. <clears throat> we changed the quests like the description a little bit we start to use the coordinates from the map so like the mostly for the pmc quests so because we were thinking like the hey you know it's like the pmc yeah. guys you know operator he should have the more information just like the somebody something you know yeah so so we felt like there is not realistic so we put for example the screens of the like they are looking for something like the, for the free building so we put like the screenshots of the buildings we also put the locations there but this is like the, the big cell you know it's not like the exact location we don't know if we will at least for the first uh, several quests we are doing it so it's like the more easy yeah i think later we will just like to be more uh or there will be less informations uh I think it will still happen with the wiki you know it's like yeah. the people who want like the insta uh informations you know yeah. or young guys or somebody who is in the hurry and has less time he will just go there we don't want to you know we were thinking about the random uh location for the quest items but on the other hand it's like the contraproductive because you want to learn you know if you are playing yeah. the second life you want to feel that you already played the first one you know so you want to be like the faster and this is how you feel like the better you know but uh, if you want to make something everything random you will play the first vibe same like the uh, second vibe like the first vibe you know there yeah. is no like the kind of the i learned something you know i know something so so it's very hard to balance it i think uh yeah I hope that there will be Vicky for the gray zone. You know, this is <laughs> there, there will, there will. There will. That's... And I'm sure that there's also a balance too yeah. between, you know, like it doesn't have to be entirely random, even if it was in a house, but it could mm -hmm. be in 50 different places in a house under a bed. Like you actually feel like you're like, mm -hmm. I know it's like, here yeah. and, and looking for it is mm -hmm. so satisfying than just running to a place, picking up the thing and then leaving. Um, yeah. Yeah. Feeling, feeling like, giving players the ability um, to feel like they've solved a riddle or, or yeah. a mystery or, you know, discovered something. If you give them the tools, it's really satisfying. If you mm -hmm. don't, then you're, you're just forcing them to go to the wiki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, 
And I don't think it requires too much. Like, you know, and I think that's kind of where some of the Tarkov quest design, where it's like, go find this thing on customs. Like, that's way too little information for me to know. But with Grey Zone, because the uh, map's so big and you've got these cities, being able to be like, even just it's in this city with a building with this graffiti on it. At least the guy drives a black car. Yeah, it doesn't like even just a little bit of that information. I feel like players, I feel like the natural state of a player is they want to stay in the game. So even just a little bit of information, I feel like most players will like, well, let me try and find it first before I have to go to the wiki. But in a game like Tarkov where there's just no information, there's like not even a place to start. Well, then I just have to immediately go over there. So even just a little bit, I feel like people want to look a little bit. It's, you, you have to somehow balance, you know, in the in the mobile when we uh, like the pull or how to say it, like they put so many information inside. So everything was understandable. Oh, yeah. And the people were always because the goal was like to keep them in the game. But there was no community because mm. like the you didn't want to like the ask somebody for something, you know, because everything was in the game. So it's like the if everything is like the so understandable and they are not leaving the game, there is no community. And when there is no community, there is no like the yeah. you no know, boost or something. That's so true. or they are not watching the you, you know, you will lose the guys, you know, it's like the, the viewers because like the why they will watch you, you know. It's like the, they are watching you because they are trying to find the information and how you play yeah. and how you get it, you know. So I think it's it should be. I think the Tarkov is very popular in the in the on the streaming because or on the videos because people learn from it. Because <laughs> people don't know what they're doing, so they come to ask <laughs> have questions. No idea. Yeah. That's actually yeah. a fair point, though. That's a fair point that the wiki and the the con- general confusion create a community of people that ask each other questions. So that's a fair point. Yeah, and and the the other interesting aspect of that too is that depending on where your perspective. Um, where you're coming from in Tarkov, Nikita wanted a challenge and he wanted like a puzzle, but didn't give information in a lot of the quests f- to solve it. Yeah. So then they, the solutions get put in the wiki and then he, they don't like the idea that, oh, well then you just go to the wiki to solve it. So then they have to make it random and even more complicated. Mm-hmm. So the wiki can't be the answer. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I, I really like your perspective because uh, I hadn't thought about the whole that community aspect yeah. of of this kind of mystery solving, figuring out, you know, information sharing, that kind of thing. Before we move on, I want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor for this episode, and that is Babbel. Babbel is a language learning app which focuses on long term retention and learning through conversation. Uh, about one in five uh, people have on their bucket list learning another language, which includes myself. It's something that I've always just found fascinating seeing somebody that I know is speaking a language that's not their native language. I've always just like, oh, it just feels so cool to do that. Uh, The best way to learn languages has always been like immersion. You've always heard people talk about like, go live in a place for six weeks or whatever, and you're going to get 80% of the way there. And obviously not everybody can do that. But if you're interested in learning another language, Babbel is really set up that way with really conversational, immersive um, lessons that kind of try and give you that edge, but on your phone, <laughs> dude. I've been I've been super excited uh, and and motivated recently to mess with Babel because I, I've been binging this channel Jalma NYC. I don't know if you've ever seen him. I haven't. He's just this normal looking little white guy that knows like a million oh. different a million different like versions of Chinese. Um, and he's I mean look, Russian, German. I mean he learns hundreds of languages and then he goes around and talks to the people he'll go to a chinese restaurant oh my and just blow and their like, minds <laughs> and speak their their very specific like dialect. dialect that only like a thousand people in the world speak and what's clear to me That's is that sick. there are it's it's insanely obvious how there are so many aspects of other cultures and people that like are instantly unlocked when you speak someone's language yeah. how much fun and respect and whatever yeah yeah Oh God, it, it's insane. And and uh, that's something that For I would sure. love to have access to, man. For sure. And that really does make a lot of sense because so much is just like broken down there. Yeah, I, that's that's so that's so cool. And there's something so impressive about that, like so impressive about that. So, uh, no, yeah, Babel is, is an awesome tool for that. They have uh, they have quick 
short lessons. So 10 minute lessons that are crafted by over 200 language experts. So the focus is really like bite sized chunks. And then what's in those lessons is very conversational speaking. It almost like starts there as the tip of the spear. You can go as deep as you want with that language. But I feel like that's the most encouraging thing when you're learning. You know what I mean? Is to be able to hold a conversation gets you excited to then want to learn more. Um, so it's really cool. Designed by real people for real conversations. Uh, Babbel's convenient courses can help you learn real life conversation skills in a different language. Um, it's easy how to order food, ask for directions, speak to, to like shopkeepers or whatever, or even consult with somebody if you're on vacation or something like that. I think that's like a really fun, practical aspect. If you're going somewhere, just doing that. And you get to have a little bit of that moment where you're on and vacation. They, they, do, they love it. Yeah. They, they all speak English. They just love it when for they're like, sure. oh, you speak. for sure. So uh, um, here's a special limited time uh, deal for podcast listeners. You can get 55% off your Babbel subscription um, at babbel.com slash podcast. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash podcast, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash podcast. Rules and restrictions may apply. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring this episode. Now, you, you mentioned in that response where you were saying, like, you know, you want people to feel like, they play and they learn. And then the next time there's a wipe, they feel like they learned. Uh, I actually don't know much about this, but like, can you talk about what wipes are going to look like? What progression is going to look like? Because I think sometimes th that that can be taken, you know, all the way to its logical conclusion where if every wipe, if the game wipes, but everything is the same and I've learned everything, then it becomes boring because I can just like in two weeks, I can go through everything because I've done it enough times and now what do I do? Okay. So like, what are your thoughts on wipes? Okay, so the vibes will be like the vibes, you know? Yeah. Everything is gone. You're starting again. Uh, we won't, we won't uh, rotate the factions, you know? So if you play for the Mitras and you start on the bottom, then you're starting on the right, you know? Yeah. So we rotate the factions. So if you if you will want to play for the same faction, you are basically in the different uh, mm. different location, the quest and everything on the beginning is same, and uh, but it's in the, a little bit like the different, yeah. you know. Uh, but uh, because there is like the it's early access, a lot of stuffs will change. Of course, you know? yeah. Okay. A lot of new buildings, you know, uh, a lot of open buildings, a lot of uh, new AIs, a lot of new quests, like yeah. the things will change. We will introduce the crafting and all these things, you know, skills. So there is like the every vibe, you know, the first vibe should be or second season should be about the day night, you know, it will be completely different. Oh, so that's so cool, yeah. you will just because it will change every few hours. And uh, you have to really think about it. You know, you will have to put some kind of the night vision, you know, in the probably in the secure container because they will be expensive. Yeah. You have to like the, you know, it's not like the, that you are choosing the time, you know. Yeah. So you are prepared. You have to think about it. So, so it will change a lot, you know. Same like the weather will change a lot. Uh, skills will change a lot. You know, they will like the, add like the, a lot of new quests. Uh, the crafting and all these things in your room, basically, because we don't have hideout, you know, PMC are not hiding, they have their own <laughs> room in the container or whatever. Yeah. But, um, and this is like the, then we will open the, 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 the main zone, you know, the ground zero. So it's like the also, you know, a lot of things, then, you know, anomalies and a lot of like the, uh, things around it so you have to learn you know how they look what they are doing to you it's like the i think for the few years we have uh, every vibe will completely change the game so I, I didn't consider this but the factions i hadn't even thought about that like will will how much eventually because maybe early access might be hard at the beginning but how much will your experience as the player change based on a faction you choose outside of what location on the map? Do they have different quest lines? Because I never thought about that where it's like, if you want a wipe to be different, you could just choose a different faction and that might shape your experience differently as well. I, I wanted on the beginning that like the everything is same in every faction. So it's like the, you know, people are not choosing, like the, they are not regretting of choosing the faction. Yeah, you know? at the start. Yeah, so, at the start. But, uh, and uh, so they have the same quest, same NPCs, same like the shops, whatever. 
other guys are pushing on me that we should change it and we make like the we should make the free games basically inside. Yeah, yeah. We will have the, a lot of other systems. Maybe we will change it, introduce uh, to every faction like the new, uh, different uh, <coughs> NPCs, different quest lines. Yeah. You know, we will change them, and then you can play the game like the three times. And you know, because I definitely understand that fear of not wanting it to just be well, this faction's meta, so everybody picks that faction, and then like that's not fun. But I do think yeah. that there's something there where if it can be balanced, if the experience can be different enough. That introduces a ton of replayability because maybe I want this faction now, maybe I want to play this faction. So that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. I, I like that. Um, it just, yeah, sorry. Yep. No, I was I was just gonna say I think that's uh I think that there's a lot of potential and it makes a lot of sense what you're saying about like especially since it's early access, each wipe is gonna be introducing features that'll really make it um make it feel yeah, different. Like the somebody there was like the one comment that even we don't have the clear vision you know we have the clear vision you know yeah we have like the design for the like the next several years but of course a lot of things will change and yeah. we don't have the you know we don't want to follow the design just because we make the design you know if the people will play it differently or they will start to asking for different things it's like the the gray zone was like the on the beginning was mostly tactical shooter but we never were thinking about the uh, the guys, for example, from the Ghost Recon, you know, when somebody like the start to command it, hey, this looks like the Ghost Recon or what we want from Ghost Recon, you know? Yeah. I was like really surprised, you know, because I, I didn't see it like the there, but they actually have the right, you know? So, so this is how we can change the game, you know, or like the people ask like the, hey, PVE only, you know, we were never thinking about it because the, for me, the complete experience is the PVE VP, yeah, you know? Yeah. I want this spice there, but uh, if a lot of people wants like the secure or cave care beer, you know stuff. So so like the way, why not? You know, it will not like the hurt anything. It's like the same like the when people are saying that uh, the you should not have the same progress in the PVE like in the PVE VP. Oh, yeah. so saying, you know, I don't think it's like the problem because like the. Uh, the the ai and everything is so tough that they will like the you know still have the hard times you know so yeah. but maybe i'm wrong you know and we will change it you know so it's like the it's a i think it's life process it's like the more like the life service but you are going somewhere you know the yeah. direction and uh but things could change you know it will not change completely yeah of you course know? Like the if the people will ask like the hey we want like the PvP maps because the combat is so fun and if you want only PvP maps maybe you know maybe we will just make them you know and then it will be pure extraction stuff in the in the game you know so it's like the a lot of things could happen. Yeah. So so on that same note, you have different perspectives, right? With with the experience of the game, you have like the developers, you have your vision for what you want, and then like you know, you guys playing the game internally, and then you have the people who stream the game or play it all the time, you know, like super seriously hardcore. And then you have the experience of like the more casual day to day players. Do you have like a f strategy or a plan on how you'll stay in touch with those different groups and listen to them? Because <laughs> I think you mean, you mean like the you in this genre. Yeah. You mean like the complaining uh, from the players, like the, the the guys making the game only for the influencers? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Something like that, for example. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, everything is feedback. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter like who did it. Oh, uh, no, it matters, you know, it's, of course, like, the, if somebody loved the Fortnite, then he tried the game, like, the out game, and he's, like, the complaining that it's, like, the too hard, we will don't make it, like, the Fortnite-ish, you yeah. know, he wants cats, like, the, as the whatever helmet, you know, it will not be there, so, uh, but the normal feedback, I think it doesn't matter who said it, we want to, like, the evaluate if it's set in our vision, and just go for it uh we want to improve this game we don't want to shift it you know to something else you know it's like the it's a of i don't know you know if the if the if we will have the several you know i don't know how to say it like the if there will be a lot of people who will want to and really scream that uh, they want to change it to something different 
I don't know, like the what we will do. I hope not, you know. Yeah. It's like the. I hope that everybody will help us to make this vision like the better, you know, not change it based on their personality. So like the, for example, with you guys, I think uh, it's like the. It's about like the hey, the combat is bad. Combat is like the good, you know. It's not feeling good, you know. It's like the you should change this, that, but not like the hey, you should change it to the extraction shooter because yeah. like the, this is what people want. People don't change it, you know. Yeah. There should be other guys who is doing it. We have the different vision. So yeah, it's like the it's like the 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 thing is that a lot of stuff is around the real data. It's very hard to like the balance it because yeah. there is real data. You know, so we cannot make like the AK uh, less powerful. <laughs> it's like the, it's, it's, it's the same. It's based on the real data. We can tweak a little bit like the, the cavities or whatever, but uh, there is like the very small like the chance. You know, we can uh, tweak a little bit uh, animations, but uh, yeah, this is what we didn't do. Like the you know like the saying like the AK should have the two point five seconds for the reload and the air 15 should have two point uh, whatever you know we just like the ask the guy like the, to make like the, the animations and we just make that you know it's like the and, and this is how we can do it and and like the how we can do it in real life and this is what is it so so it's like the i'm pretty happy with it because yeah. like the we need to like the fix some numbers and like the think about it it's like the uh we're trying to really like the you know to to get the info about the cavities for example and try to put them inside the game what we can tweak is the values you know we yeah. try to use the initial values from the real life you know yeah so it's the cost is same because the i think the real life is already balanced for us <laughs> so maybe, maybe it works you know yeah but we don't know it's like the how many stuff you know that like, will be a lot of like the exploiting things that something is like the more valuable and it's selling like the more and we make the mistakes and it's like the respawning faster or it's like the more easy to get because there is less enemies so this is what we will tweak yeah the thing is that i want like the 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 thing is that uh what we want to work with the people is about like the, their experience emotions you know what yeah. they feel the goal is like that the, they really experience good combat and like the great times and like the remote re how to say it like the that something they will like the recall in the past you know in the future you know yeah. it's like the this is what we want it's like the uh you know there could be some features like the okay missing the hold breath you know mm -hmm. or hold breath is too long because it's like the then too easy so we can tweak it if the people will like to say it you know of course yeah. But if somebody will say it, no. If you will say it only, for example, the Veritas, <laughs> yeah. okay. He's complaining about everything, so yeah. whatever. You know. No, I definitely but, think that, like, that's a tough challenge for you guys. Because I think, you know, it's a, it's a, we live in a weird spot where, you know, everybody wants, like, open development, game developers that are open to feedback, which you guys have already shown that you are, which is great. But there's a limit to that, right? Kind of like what you're saying. We don't want to turn this game into a battle royale just because some people on Reddit said so. But when you have a lot of people playing your game, the feedback that comes up might help you make micro adjustments that you maybe weren't thinking. And yep. finding that balance can be hard because if we say we're open to feedback, we'll change what you want to change, then people almost feel this ownership. Well, it's like, well, I want you to change this, so you should change it. It's like, well, that's not always how it works. And so that's definitely, you know, good mm -hmm. luck <laughs> with you guys interpreting all that feedback. But I do think that ultimately most people are excited about that attitude. That you guys are at least trying to have that where you like we do have a vision we do know what we want this game to be a few years from now but at the same time like you said our priority is that you guys have fun so we want to also be listening and make you know make those adjustments as we go so um i think that's i think that's valuable i would love to hear your thoughts speaking of like feedback i feel like the the the, the number one thing is always going to be PVP. You know what I mean? P balancing PVP, how much PVP, how little PVP. I'd love to hear, because I know that you have you guys have made it clear, it's no um, secret that this is a PVE VP game, that the PVE is going to be the main threat. There's going to be more PVE on the map, and, and there's going to be a lot. But um, how do you guys see the PVP component? Um, and uh, are you guys going to... Will there be like... 
map design catalysts where like maybe places like this have really good loot and that might be a natural progression. I always think of like day Z really big map. And you basically always knew you could get into PVP in the Northwest airfield because that was where all the best loot was. So if you didn't want PVP and you avoided that, you could kind of go about mm -hmm. your day and, and avoid PVP for the most part. And so is there, do you guys, are you guys thinking like that too, where we can provide places where the people that want PVP can get it pretty consistently, but other places where you're probably less likely, maybe you're never completely safe, but there's a little bit of that kind of map flow to it. Mm -hmm. We were, uh, or we are focusing mostly on the PVE experience yeah. now. Uh, and with this PVP spice, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, I think the, our main goal around the first year is build the main systems, you know. Yeah. And, um, and make the game stable, uh, run fast, you know, put all the things together. We want to. We will have to fix a lot of things because people will complain. I hate like the when the when the guys are adding new features and not fixing the old bugs and they are there forever, you know. <clears throat> so we didn't think too much about the PvP. I think it will not happen very often. It will maybe happen in some of the choke points where it's like the good loot, you know, as you said. Yeah. But I think the PvP guys should will be will have to be very patient you know mm. it's like the, i think the it's good for the role playing for the some sniper you know he will take like the, a lot of coffee and he will just sit somewhere for the hour you know and then maybe he will kill somebody you know but uh, air wing. <laughs> power uh, because i don't think that the people will like the camp the landing zones you know there yeah. is a lot of landing zones yeah. and like the Maybe they will learn the patterns of the of the helis, you know. Maybe they will learn like the the hearing, the shooting, and like the go there and try to like the okay, they are going to the D zone or that zone and wait for them and for ambush. Yeah, which would be pretty cool, you know. It's like it's just the ambush. It's not like the camping. Um, I. This this is like the uh, this is some kind of the social experiment, basically. You know, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, we want to focus like the real on really on the PvP PvE guys. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. guys who wants to don't play the Tarkov. It's not like the exchange the Tarkov, you know, and then like the move to the like the maybe better game or different game, whatever. When we were done with this, maybe we will implement the PvE only. You know, I was thinking, um, it's not leaking, but there is option like the maybe take the this kind of the areas of interest and make them like the small maps you know and like they just put the pvp there you know yeah. there is all the yeah. options you know or maybe increase the players you know uh in the in the map you know and and do it so that's like there was something in the future yeah i think that's fair i think that's a fair answer that you guys know what you want which is it to be a pve focused game and that especially in the beginning your focus is on creating a stable experience I think mm. that's a really fair. I think people might hear that and go, oh, this isn't PvP, whatever. I don't want to play. And that's fair, like, because people, but like, I think you can't really, I think nobody can be too mad that your focus is creating a stable experience that works first. And then, you know what I mean? Because if you do, if you have a lot of PvP, but you're not working on a stable experience, the PvP yeah. player will just complain that the PvP isn't fun because it's not stable. So, I, so I think that like I think that's fair and I think that you guys know what you want to do and that's good for a lot of people to hear because I think there are a lot of gamers out there that are just addicted to PvP. They just want to shoot everybody. You're on my team, I want to shoot you. You're on the other team, I want to shoot you. And that gray zone might not be that experience in the beginning, um, but I think that that's good to hear that your priority at the beginning is just kind of like, yeah, almost like social experiment. What are people going to do? Where are they going to go? But is the experience working and is it stable? Mm -hmm. I think that's good. I think that's fair. We were always thinking about that we are building the sandbox, you know, it's like the, you just create the sandbox with some kind of the rules and, and then you just like the, let the people like the, to do that something. Mm -hmm. It's not like the, that we are thinking about the, it's not single player, you know, you are not creating the experience every few meters and like the, he should jump yeah. and like the, you know, whatever. And there should be AI, and after you kill the few AI, there should be treasure, you know, and then like the again, 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 you know, so so it's like the 
it's sandbox. Yeah. You know? Yeah. If, and we will if, just improve it, you know, make the more features there and like the, just let the play in the sandbox as they want. Yeah. yeah. You you can't talk about PvP without the giant elephant in the uh FPS world, which is cheating. Yeah. Um <laughs> That's a thing that, like, I, if I want to make a game, I'll probably make a game sometime in my life. But I've basically decided I'll never make a multiplayer game because <laughs> it seems like it seems like an impossible thing to to fight. Yeah. Tell us everything about. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us everything. All of it. Everything. Uh, to help the cheaters, right? Yeah. Uh, Hey, it's like the, we, we know, like, the, it's like the pain in the ass, you know. And the thing is that then, uh, like, the, when there is rumors about the cheating, that every guy who killed you is cheater, right? <laughs> so, it's like, the, it's, since, like, the first day of the Counter-Strike, you know, it's like the, nobody thinks that he died because somebody was better, but because he was cheating, you know, yep. which is pretty bad experience. And this is what we don't want to. You know, it's like, of course, we move to the PvE because there are, we're thinking that there will be less uh, less uh, cheaters, you know. But uh, we know that because it's a high stake game, it's like the yeah. people will want to cheat or like the, you know, this kind of the uh, gather the item items for the people who are just wants to buy them. I don't remember how it's called now. Oh, yeah, RMT. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So we don't want to let the people ruin your experience, you know, somehow. We have like the, we're trying to make, um, you know, it's like the more dedicated, uh, like the client server, a client and dedicated server, like the architecture. We are trying to like the validate a lot of stuff. We are doing the things differently than, uh, for example, some Unreal games. Mm. So for example, our bullets are really uh, simulated on the server, you know, it's not like the, that uh, they are just validating hits on the client. This is what we did always, like the since 2000. Uh, we're trying to, of course, like the, you know, if they will, they can somehow cheat, but it should not be like the super crazy, you know, we have, we cannot control everything on the server, you know, yeah. if you will like the speed up animations or like the, you can like the, fa make a uh, more faster uh, shooting and because the luck uh both uh, like the bullets can arrive like the and one tick for example because server is ticking only 30 fps so you cannot like the see the delays or whatever he can he can like the sending some packets from the client you have to trust it and then uh, where the come like the some other like the solution you know so like the machine learning you know which can find these kind of the things you know which can find like the that you are using the macros or whatever, and or you ha your behavior is like do not humanish mostly, you know, yeah. or you have some kind of the pattern. I think the machine learning can like the can work with the ESP, you know, radars, you know, because they know that you are following them. We are planning to have the this kind of the thing if you are following and like the looking at the players who are behind the behind the walls you know mm -hmm. and uh maybe we will mark him and just kick him out you know there is a lot of options uh, how to do it um uh, we don't want to be like the i think the machine learning is the is the way to go it's not like the creating super uh, hardcore ish like the hardware ish uh, firmware ish you know whatever it's like the i think the machine learning can fight them you know and um so so we are trying we are working with one group for one company and we will see how it works because it's out uh, it's like the unknown field you know mm -hmm. i hope it will not flag the good guys you know <laughs> and then everybody will say like the hey whatever and um, we have the of course the easy anti-cheat you know so we hope that like the multiple solution will help us and uh, of course there could be some reporting we can like to check the guy like the how he's progressing and and then maybe do something so le le let's see yeah you know it's like a, i think the, the first few days it will be okay if you will you know we promised the the influencers uh the early build you know like the before the release mm -hmm. so if you will don't leak it to the Paris guys or hacker guys, <laughs> then there will not be cheats, you know, yeah, at least yeah. for one week, you know. So 
So you gotta then, insert insert in uh, you know self destruct buttons for all of the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so if, if someone else gets it, you'll know that it was like the build you sent to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah we will go. do watermark there, and then we will <laughs> yeah. do like the big cows of it. You know. Yeah. And so, are they? Yeah. Are how are you going to be? I don't know anything about how you guys are planning on doing servers. I know that that's something that has been in the conversation recently with Tarkov and cheating. If like, if I could run my own server, I could moderate it. And the moment someone is remotely sketchy, I'm not banning them from the game. I can just ban them from my server and you mm -hmm. can have like a community sort of server. Is that something you guys are planning on doing or will you <clears throat> own all of the servers and manage them? Uh, not on the beginning. It's not like the, in our, like the, you know, we don't have the resources. We would be happy to release the game without bugs, you know, and like to yeah. optimize it. And, there will be definitely missing this kind of the features. We would like to uh, support uh, these guys who are renting the servers, so you can rent our server on their machines. So we are offloading the cost a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, definitely we will support the custom servers, you know? So you can like the moderated, have the community, people who play it, you know, there. And, and let's Huge. see what yeah. don't. We even thinking about. I love the thing in the squad when you can, you know. I don't know the guy who is streaming it, like the where he's like the he's commenting the fights in the yeah, squad. Yeah, like the eye in the sky. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. This is so awesome, you know. That would be so cool in the gray zone that OP. somebody can like make the videos, you know, and so talk about it. Hey, guys are coming from the right side, you know, and there is this one. That would be so awesome, you know. So having having a free camera kind of yeah. thing is. I'm telling you, it's genius because it makes a million people want to make videos and yeah. content about your game. If th the moment you can do like a nice panning shot over a town, yeah, it's yeah, infinitely yeah. more interesting than having to like free look up with your gun <laughs> down. <laughs> yeah. screen, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's something what we are planning. You know, it's like the on the mobile we, when we wanted to move to the esport, uh, we were always thinking about the like the influencers or like the why the people are like the why the esports are uh so successful yeah and uh, it's mostly about the viewers you know it's not actually about the about the game how fun is for the players yeah but how fun is to watch it you know so we want to make the some support for the for you guys and for the everybody so they can make like the some nice videos and whatever some exciting not just somebody shooting and dying yeah so let's see but the time will come. Of course, know? yeah. And, and I think and people will miss... Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, like, all this kind of stuff, like, I we love having these conversations, but, you know, obviously, <laughs> this is, like, later stuff. Like, you guys have been... I, I just... For the people that are listening, I always like coming back to that, that, like, your guys, you know, at first, you're just trying to put this out in early access and learn and grow and, and grow in the game. So, you know, we can't expect all this kind of stuff immediately, but it's cool to hear that, like, private servers like that are even on the table, even in your minds later down the road. Because I think there have been some games like DayZ that that has worked really well, where, um, or even like Grand Theft Auto, a lot of the RP being able to kind of create communities of people that can help moderate and like tightly control that experience and maybe share some of that cost, then can kind of create some cool experiences. So um, that is really cool to hear for sure. Yeah, and people will misunderstand too what you're saying like or what we're talking about like we we're not talking about like making the game for content creators but adding in features that content creators more often than not you know would predominantly use means more people interested more people wanting to play more yeah. i mean you're basically putting in a way for us to advertise your game yeah which means more purchases which means more development which means the game is better yeah right yeah exactly you know I think, yeah, exactly. It's not like the, you know, the, the main focus, is, of course, on the players, you know, this game is about the players. It's not like the eSport thing, you know, so it's not actually about the viewers, but, uh, you know, we can make your life more easy and uh, you are, you are, you know, we don't need to pay you like some big guys for something. So if I will have to pay you, I will never do it. You know, you will have to work on it, but like, yeah. uh, we can like do this. So. It is not only about like the established influencers, you know, everybody can do it, you know, everybody can like the use it. So I think it's worth it's um yeah. But of course the player first, yeah, the creator second, you know. So and uh, you us that? the first, you know. That's a clip. So no, yeah, that's awesome. That's uh 
that's really cool to hear. Um, uh, I don't know, V, did you have any more? Well, I know, I know, I mean, I know, like, here, the, the thing that everybody asks that I, I'm going to ask, knowing full well we're not going to get an answer, but they'll <laughs> yell at me if I don't. Everyone wants to know when they can play. <laughs> Soon to you. You won't like the, the the Rick and others will kill me, you know. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I, listen. I, I I know, I know. We're not getting we an answer, ask. but okay. they'll so kill I, me if I don't ask. <laughs> okay, so we have the date. Okay, we are still not sure if we will hit it. So the last That's thing fair. what we want is to postpone it. You know, it's like uh, there is still uh, I don't know, like the four hundred bucks uh like the from the p0 to the whatever like the some numbers for the very like the you know the visual only things yeah uh we want to be sure that it's the game is very hard to test it because it's like the so huge and uh, we don't have 100 testers you know so it will be a little bit uh you know people should expect that it's early access you know it's like yeah. the early access like the real early access it's not like the early access after the seven years you know, and uh, I think the content and the amount of the features which are already there is probably the one of the biggest early access ever, like the was release, you know, yeah. and um, uh, we want to be sure that the game is not crashing, you know, that the game is running well. Yeah. And this is the our like the the now like the the, the biggest focus, you know, it's yeah. like the, we almost stop to adding the the features you know i'm fighting with the last feature which is really i really hate it you know <laughs> and the releasing the empty brass like the from the from the gun exactly same like the what you actually fired you know and then you have this kind of the bolt so you have to like the exactly put it like the out you know and kick yeah. it out then you have to load the another you know from the from the uh magazine which is like the sound super cool in the normal fps but you can have the different ammo. They should look different, you know, with the different tips. So it's like the this is like the foot, you know. I hate this game sometimes, you know, which is like the push too much. <laughs> that like it's so complicated to make yeah. the stuff. And um, so this is one of the last feature. You know, we are focusing mostly now on the good communication when the shit happens. You know, we are disconnected, server crash, mm. whatever. We are working on the on the some like the, I think the last feature is uh, almost finished and there is some missing things uh, about the squads because our squads are working differently than every other squad. You can join to the leader to the different instance. You can receive the invite for the squad when you are playing in the different instance, you know, you, and whatever. So it's like the gotcha. working differently. So this means like the, a lot of issues. Uh, we, of course, have to be sure that like the, your profile is properly safe, you know, but we cannot save it with the every action because it will be just like the whatever. Yeah. We need to optimize the bandwidth uh, because we are paying for the bandwidth, you know, we don't want to lose every money because the bytes, you know, and or megabytes. Uh, so it's like this is our main focus and we want to be sure because if the one crash is happening to us, it could happen 1,000 or 10,000 in the players, you know, depending on the on the success of the game. So we have to be really sure that everything that we can find, we killed, you know, or we fixed. So this is why I cannot announce it. Uh, I would be like the really happy, <laughs> like the really, you know, it's like the. <sighs> I cannot say. No, no. no. You, I mean, <laughs> you you only get one first impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. part of that yeah. first impression yeah. is how the game feels to play, and if it crashes, and if it has bugs, and whatever. And the other is if you're able to make good on your promises, which includes a release date. You know, if yeah. it's late and then late and then late and then late, people will lose confidence yeah. and whatever. So, like, I totally, I totally yeah. get it. The other thing, like that, that because this success we didn't experience or didn't expect, like the this stuff. You know, we like the it's like it make us like the really scary. You know, like the the, the you guys are waiting for it. You know, <laughs> that I'm afraid of it. You know, it's like the, you will start to play it and what they will say. You know, it's like the, now it's not under control. You know, they can do like the anything yeah. what they want. You know, the people who will start to stream it and it will crash in the real time streaming. You know, it's like the it's like the then there is so. Uh, 
like a lot of people waiting to buy it in the first day so they will try to immediately jump on it you know yeah. we don't know if we are prepared for the servers you know we don't know exactly how many concurrent players uh, like they can play it you know or like they will play it it's like there's some numbers with the uh hell divers are fucking scary you know like the, how many <laughs> yeah. people play it you know all palm divers you know it's like the palm yeah. so it's like the we really don't know what can happen now yeah you know and uh and uh, if you will make the good job and you will love it, then like the okay, that's even the worst for us because there will be more people, you know, and then <laughs> we need more servers, you know, we will just don't sleep, you know, yeah, and uh, more crashes basically, you know, more crash reports, you know. So, so we want to be sure that everything is perfect when we see the light on the end of the tunnel, yeah, it's basically mean that the we will get the less bug than we are fixing, so it's starting to going down, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, then we will see, like, the hey, okay, yeah, we know that we can probably hit the day or not. You know, that's so. that's fair. Like, and and like I said, I don't think we expected a, a a date from you. You know, we just had to ask. But I think that that's. I even think though that that response is really good for people to hear because it really is a weird spot for gaming where like you almost can't win because if you wait and you put out a game that works really well. You know, you have the Helldivers experience where like no indie developer could realistically expect that a million people want to play their game, but they made a good game and a million people want to play and then that creates issues because now you have too many people that want to play. But if you put out a game that isn't good, nobody wants to play your game. And it's like such a weird, but the fact that you guys are even just considering the possibilities and trying to set yourself up for the best launch, you know, whatever that is, whether it's a small launch, a medium launch, a huge launch, whatever, um, I think it's good. I think the only thing worse than not having a release date is having a release date that never gets hit. And so I think you guys yeah. are doing the right thing, you know what I mean, by not saying anything as opposed to just saying something and then it moves and then saying it and then it moves and it's to erode that trust in the beginning before the game is even out. So it's, uh, it is <coughs> fascinating that... to hear. I think we somehow wrongly communicated it, you know, it's like the, we were always thinking before, like the, around the Q1 and Q2, you know, but for some reason, we were communicating more like the publicly Q1, you know, and uh, this is something like the, what we like the screw a little bit. We also didn't expect like the, that so many people will like the, uh, read every word, you know, so I will put something on the tweet and immediately from it is like the YouTube video, you know, this, <laughs> <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's like the, but I think it's like the still better than announce the game and then say like the, we will like the release it in the three years, you know, so it's like the, it's still, I think the since November, so it's like the six years or six months or five months, you know, something like this. So I think it's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. People, wanna... people will forget about everything. If we will release the game and it will be good, people will forget about like the everything what we said before, you know, or what we screw or that they they will have to wait or whatever. They will just be happy to play it, you know. I Seeing hope. what happened with No Man's Sky is <laughs> is yeah. something worth it's something worth learning yeah. from. And actually, you know what? I'll send you something that I actually put together for a video I never made about like the rise and fall of No Man's Sky, or sorry the fall and rise because now yeah the game is fantastic and everybody loves it and it's a comeback story whereas originally right it was this massive failure and a huge part of that is communicating and how difficult it is to be in your position and communicate with the community and the media yeah. and have and be understood um but i think most people who watch this uh would would describe you as as based i would at least <laughs> say that which is basically um keep doing what you're doing yeah which is just being honest down to earth and like reasonable uh and you'll you'll probably uh you'll probably do well yeah yeah thank you thank you i agree so um yeah i mean i don't know did you have any other questions or topics i don't we don't want to take too much of your time um, yeah no i don't i don't think so you've already been very uh, you, just, you just delayed the game by the one hour and a half <laughs> yeah we we <laughs> delayed the game by an hour and a half well uh, we appreciate it um <laughs> no seriously thank you so much for uh for taking the time to do this it like it it means a lot to us and and to the community to be able to kind of just like peek behind the curtain a little bit and and get some questions answered i think uh 
you know, we know, you know, we as the content creators, as the podcast, we know that we we don't want to put you guys in a weird position. We're excited about the game. We ask questions. We don't want to create a situation where you answer a question and then you're held to this. Some Reddit post was like on the podcast. He said that we know it's a balance. And so we try our best to, you know, kind of position that as well, that, you know, it uh, it really is a favor to us that you came on and are willing to talk about the game. You're passionate about it. We kind of, you know, represent a bunch of gamers that are also passionate about it and excited. So uh, we really do. Uh, thank you so much for for taking the time to do this. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. You know, it's like always good to talk about the games. I love it. You know, to talk. Yeah. It's like the second thing. You know, first is like to work on it, but then like to talk about it. Yeah. And. Um, Maybe we can do like the another stuff after the after the release. Yeah. So like the you know Beautiful. maybe I will say like the hey guys it's super great you know <laughs> or like the well you know it was like the full of the bullshit you know sorry guys so let's see. absolutely absolutely you're welcome anytime yep. to talk about anything so thank yep. you again thank you so much we thank appreciate you, you thank you for coming and uh, yeah we'll talk to you soon okay cheers guys see, see you later. Later.